Good evening. It is um, Tuesday, September 27th, just after six o'clock, and we are convening the meeting of the CDAC. Um, we'll take attendance. Can we go around the table and just say our name? I think that's it now, now that we're in person. Starting with Deb. Deborah Hogan, Mayor of Pointe. Justin McGregor, East Side. Michelle O'Loughlin, South Side. Marianne Callahan, First District. Kenya Middleton, Mayor Appointee. Ebony Hato, Fourth District. <laughs> Brandy Brown, District Three. <laughs> Good evening, this is Councilwoman Angela Riley representing the third district of Binghamton. Thank you. Um, the next item on our agenda is the approval of the April meeting minutes. Has anyone, has everyone had a chance to look at them? Is there any discussion? No, I'll on make any a motion to approve the April 27th, 2022 minutes. Okay, Michelle O'Laughlin has made the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Justin seconds. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, that passes. <laughs> Next it will be our funding discussion. And Steve, what did you want us to do exactly with this? Just look over the figures that you gave us. Oh, okay. Yes, yes I, I do. do. Can you, can whoever has the agenda, can you pass that on to, to Marian? I do okay. apologize. No, I have it. I have it. I, I just didn't make. Yeah, I'm it. sorry. I, I printed this off real That's quickly. That's okay. I didn't, I didn't connect. The RFP update and the process. Um, has everyone had a chance to look at the RFP that Steve sent out? And does anyone have any comments about any changes that they would like made? I myself wish to just inform the, the committee, I'm going to add a section in here. Uh, so this represents, the one I sent out was the CDBG for service and capital programs. Um, the ESG one's similar enough. I didn't feel like needing to print it out as well. It's close enough, but it has the ESG requirements. Um, due to some issues with some agencies, I'm going to explicitly spell out in this application that starting on capital projects is not allowed until the environmental review is done. This is a HUD requirement. It is probably one of the strictest HUD environments or uh, regulations there are. Um, they simply you put a hammer in a wall for a capital project, you want funded with HUD. If the ERR is not allowed, the entire project is ineligible for CDBG. So this is just, this is HUD 101, but it's, as I said, it's probably the most, it's the strictest regulation. And unfortunately, in the last few years, I did a calculation, and I think I even mentioned it to uh, Councilwoman Riley at, at a previous meeting, we've had almost over $200,000 in programs that were, can't, that were denied because of agencies moving ahead before the environmental review is done. Now, someone had brought up a question of what happens to those funds. Generally, we go to the agency and say, what else can we do, you do with these mo this money? So it's not like it goes away, but it's one of those things that if they're planning on using CDBG funds for a specific project, they cannot start. So I'm gonna add that in there. Um, so if you guys had some other um, suggestions that you wanted thrown in here for anything, Let's go for it. Um, we can absolutely update this and modify it. And I'll try to even get it to um, contract and supply by tomorrow. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to get the applications out Friday. So that's kind of the point of the whole RFP discussion process. Steve, who does the environmental review? I do. Oh, okay. It, it takes, a, it takes a, is your mic on? Just making sure you're being recorded. <laughs> okay. Got to be green, and then you can give it a second. You know, well, it it's flashing, so I think that means the power. Oh. I think your battery's dying. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, you're good. You should be good. Oh, it's here. Run with it until it goes full time. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I do the environmental review. Um, I can tell you from past experience and including working with the state CDBG program for environmental reviews, you're looking at a minimum 30 days for any capital project. And with the new updates to the Fish and Wildlife Service, I'm looking at two months minimum for environmental reviews. And unfortunately, some agencies don't understand that there is delay, even if I start tomorrow, uh, that it does take a while. Um, typically, the things that stretch it out the longest are the historical review and then the, um, the um, Endangered Species Act situation. Um, I guess this is the time to speak about this. Um, so for capital projects in the city of Binghamton, we must determine whether they have an impact on endangered species. So pretty much the entire southern half of the city has a potential for the endangered species northern long ear bat. So that means Fish and Wildlife Service has to approve any capital project there. And they're the ones that they're looking at 60 days of delay um, because they're backed up and they don't have enough staff. So does this mean we should shift projects to the northern part of the city? Unknown. Um, if there's a time crunch, you can't, you can't rush ERRs, unfortunately. So um, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Uh, the other one is SHPO. SHPO has to approve any projects in case there's a potential historical impact, and that's handled through our historical planner who submit historical planner who submits that to the Chris system through SHPO at the state for approval. And that generally takes 30 days, but can sometimes be quicker. Everything else is usually pretty simple. We try to avoid doing projects in the preliminary 100-year floodplain because they have issues. Uh, the 500 year the 500 year preliminary floodplain is not a big deal as long as it's not like a hospital. Um, and other than that, as long as they're not near a contaminated spot, a con contaminated toxic site or something, or I'm trying to think what else could potentially have an impact, nothing I can think of. Um, those are generally the ones that drag it out the longest. Steve, can you tell us what Shippo is? Shippo. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I, I live and breathe in a world of uh, letters, so I do apologize. That is the State Historical Preservation Office. Thank you. There's also the FIPO, which is the <laughs> Tribal Historical Preservation Office, which I'm not sure when any SHPO project becomes a FIPO project, but that's what we pay Sean for in the planning office. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, but, St Steve, when we do have the capital uh, presentations, can this be made very clear? Can we have a sheet that will maybe somehow summarize all of this so that we can help you reinforce this with those people? Are you talking about you want me to sort of put in the application process itself that well, those particular were, issues might, you might were drag going it out? You to do that anyway, but what I was thinking oh. is if you could give it to us and when we are, you know, listening to them talk oh. about their capital projects, we could help you by reinforcing that concept. Hold on. So you guys want uh well, unless anybody disagrees, but I think that might be a good thing for us to do. The more reinforcement, the better. Yeah, no, I agree. And I agree. Okay. Um, the more information given to the agencies um and also the public that they serve, that there won't be any questions. Obviously, there will because this is brand new. Right. Um, but I think the more information we can provide would be the best. And it will help them to plan knowing that they might have a 60-day lag time you know, yeah. at least a 60 day lag, lag time. So yeah, so they're not planning around, they can plan around that. Well, they can plan not to do it until they get, yeah. you know, so we can we can help you to reiterate that. Um, so it's not a bad thing. Yeah, I do wanna just in, uh, make sure everyone understands the, the, the projects we're starting now is for next the next program year, which will start September 1st, 2023 and run until the end of August, 2024. So there is a bit of a lead time here, um, and this counts for both service programs for CDBG and ESG, as well as the capital projects themselves. So just so everyone's aware of the, of the, of the, the time period for this contract we're working on. Good. Okay. So are there any RFP updates that anyone wants to make? I don't see any. I think we trust you, Steve. <laughs> oh, Councilwoman. You, um, Chair of the committee. 
So last go round, we implemented some new processes where the people were able to secure meetings individually with you. And then there was a period, I think, where we had a listening session as well. Is that, remember, we added two new steps, I think. Do you guys remember? I, I think we try to do it. Yeah, I think I did a training session, which I can do like a pre-application training session. And then I can also do a pre-contract training session. Um, I, I've done that in years past, but everything's been so messy with COVID that I have not done it recently. But I can certainly do that here and we can work that into the budget or to the time process so that I, if we, if, so let's say RFPs go out Friday. I could in two weeks do a sort of an instructional course and then that might help. And then you guys can go from there with your schedule on where you want um, applications returned with enough turnaround time for them to do a presentation and so on. But yeah, I can do it. So you're saying like, I, well, I've been wanting to do that a free one. I just hear the thoughts of the committee because I found out that um, organizations in the community that may have felt this process too daunting were mm -hmm. able to then ask questions of Steve to hear from exactly. others and then propose uh, their ideas individually and then prepare a more robust packet. And I think we had a number of, much more packets this go around than we've seen mm -hmm. in years prior. So I would, I, I think that was valuable. And um, although it lengthened the calendar quite a bit, it, especially when you had to listen to all of those presentations, it helped diversify the applications and the organizations we supported. So yeah. Councilwoman, to clarify what you're saying, are you saying that this would be a process that would be done by Steve himself with the agencies like you used to do, or are you proposing another format? Well, I think that's what this body is for. So again, the back when you did the session, it was via Zoom. We're back in the live meeting setting, you know, and I, not that you can't host it via Zoom. I think we could. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that'll, I don't think it'll violate any open meetings law because it's not technically an open uh, meeting. An it's a training meeting. session. Yeah, Exactly. So I think, again, it, whatever makes it easier for you but I do think having that open format where the, the process is discussed. And remember last year, you had the calendar too. Yeah. You just had to go back and revise it. So they knew what their goals were based upon that meeting. Yeah. And then they were able to come back and then schedule additional appointments as necessary. So no, I'm not asking that we change it, but I do think it was very beneficial Okay. To, the, to the organizations in our community. So if we were to keep it the same and Steve does the presentation, does that require a vote, Steve? I mean, technically the calendar nor the RFP needs a, a formal vote, but your recommendation, especially if it's approved by the majority of the CDAC, is helpful for me to know. So, but I, I would say if you're gonna do like this approval, let's, if there's anything else you wanna throw in there first, let's do that and maybe do it as one vote for the entire RFP as okay. opposed to individual elements so in the RFP. I think we also need to clarify how we all feel about your training sessions. Are we in agreement that Steve should begin that process again? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I would encourage, I'll do it as a Zoom meeting, and I do encourage uh, CDAC members and, of course, council members to uh, attend because it may be some uh, um, eye-opening on what, what is necessary for, for certain projects. Okay. But that would be voluntary. That would not be absolutely mandatory. voluntary. Yes, okay. and I'd probably do it during the day because okay. that's when that's when nonprofits would, it would be, be recorded. That could be looked at later uh, at our convenience. I mean, are you asking for? I'm trying to think if I have to <laughs> legally record it or if I can record it. No, if you could record it, that yeah. would mean that okay. people who work during the day oh. might be able to access it on the weekend when they have nothing else to do. All right, I'll just have to figure <laughs> out where we can host it. I'll have to talk to Lori about that of where yeah. we can host it. I mean, if you could clarify that for us, yep. that would be great. That would be yeah. great because it would be good. But if we could have it at our own convenience, that would be even better. Absolutely. Okay. So I take it that there's no discussion on the um, updates to the RFP. Anyone has any suggestions anywhere? Oh. Deb? My only concern was not to lengthen the calendar with the training session. I think that's just part of our calendar, but I don't think it would necessitate um, lengthening that because we are on a very tight schedule. No, this would be something that Steve would be doing in his capacity. So, yeah, it's sort of. Yeah, I figured I would do it during a day, Tuesday, Wednesday, in. Thursday, something like that. Okay. Probably 11 o'clock or 2 o'clock, whenever. I, 
No, do 11. You do it after lunch. People fall asleep when you show up. <laughs> yeah, no, I know true. this from experience. <laughs> that's true. Uh, are there any other issues that anyone wants to bring up regarding these, the update and the process? Okay, I have something. I was looking at it. I don't know if I, I read it wrong, but it looks like that uh, message went out on September 21st, and then you want a response by September 27th. Is that correct? Uh, probably last year, yes, because there was a pretty tight turnaround, but we can stretch that out. That's part of the budget, the, the sort of the calendar process tonight is you guys can determine how long you want to give agencies to respond. Okay. Uh, assume I'm going to do the session, a training session, um, I don't know, within two or three weeks. Um, generally, we like to give everybody a month because that's an easy thing to remember one month from now. And then you have to give me a few days, preferably a week, to get your packets together before I can hand them over to you. So you're looking five to six weeks. But if you want to stretch that out to give agencies a longer time to respond, we absolutely can. Well, I don't know about five to six weeks, but definitely not six days. Okay. Yeah, that's my... Oh, that might have been a typo too on the last one. Okay. I just know last year was very tight because we were moving things around. What has the usual process, how long has it been? Generally about 30 days. 30 days. We usually do like four weeks to 30 days and then an additional week for me to collate. And that would be something that most agencies would be used to because I think that's what most um, applications require is a 30-day turnaround, right? So are we okay with a 30-day turnaround with maybe another week added to get our packets to us? So Steve, that would make it what, end of? So Friday would be? October, early November for us to begin to meet. So Friday would be the 30th. So you assume return around time and return would essentially be Halloween. And then a week after would be the 7th. Um, I potentially could have everything ready by the 4th of November. Does that feel comfortable for everybody? OK. And while I think of it, um, you see my two binders up at the top there. I brought them back. They've been sitting on my front porch since COVID. If anyone has other binders to bring back, that would be good because Steve recycles them. Yeah. Um, something did just dawn on me, and I do want to apologize because I completely forgot about this. The RFPs are returned to contract and supply, which meets on a Wednesday. Uh, does anybody know when the 31st is? No, the 31st is not. That's like a... The 30th is Monday. Yeah. Monday. How about 11 2 for return? That would be Wednesday the 2nd. For them to return it to you. Well, for them to return them to contract and supply. Right, Con to, to uh, the city. Yeah, so the process for anyone who's never been to contract and supply before is it's um, uh, these like RFPs or any sort of um, uh, application or quote on a thing is due by a certain period of time so we can get on the, con the, the board of contract and supply. Um, they accept them officially, it gets recorded in the minutes and then basically I get uh, basically a dolly stacked with applications that I then wheel up to my office, so. And your turnaround time is? I could do it in a couple days, uh, that's gonna be fun. Would a week be more uh, reasonable? Well, no, no. I mean, it's just, it's it's a process. It usually takes generally a day. And if any <laughs> CDAC members want to come by and volunteer <laughs> and help me sort the applications, Only please if we can do. park in the central parking lot. I okay. can't guarantee that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's that's a fun day. I'll tell you that. Right. Um, so if you get them on the second. I could have them by the re ready by the fourth. And then I can have them ready by the fourth, either for pickup or I do have mostly everybody's address. If you move, let me know right away. So that's the option is you can pick them up or I can drop them off at your office. You realize you spoiled us with the drop off. I know, I know. Um, <laughs> and we love you for it, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I can I could have them out by the fourth basically dropped off. Um, yeah, I think okay. that's doable. It's a tight turnaround, but yeah, we can do it. So that would make our first meeting on, you know, the review of these applications. Well, before we start that, can we move move on this issue? Oh, yeah. And then we'll move on to the scheduling issues, which will be a little more complicated, I think. Okay. So let me just double check that we're talking about uh, they're going to go out by the 30th. 
They're going to be in by the, what did I say, the second? So 9.30, 11.2. I'll have to have a session somewhere in between. And then I'll, they'll, have, they'll have them available by the fourth, uh, end of day, the fourth. And again, you can pick them up or I can drop them off. Um, so then you would have them on a Friday. So um, is there anything? Oh, sorry, I mean, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say, is there anything else we want to modify? Um, there was a suggestion of some digital copies um, that instead of having everybody make a copy, you know, the number of copies that is made is based off the number of potential CDAC members, which is 11, plus me, the mayor, city council as a whole. And it has been discussed that we should include the additional two uh, ex officio members. So that would be 16 copies. Um, that is counting, a lot of paper. Are you, are you counting the ex officio twice? No, there's two ex officios. But they're on council. Correct, but the, the, the council one is specifically for the council as a oh, whole. Oh, one council. Oh, I, okay. give it, I give it to, to I see. I thought you clerk. meant individual councils. No, 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 I give it okay. to the clerk. So um, what does anyone feel about possibly not having a paper backup and having a digital copy of the application? I like that better. I like that better. Okay. I'm still going to need paper like copies paper. for me. Like paper. Okay. Um, I'll so, be printing mine out anyway. So yeah, Deb, both, I like. Or for me. Paper. Okay, hold on. Let me. <laughs> Can we do like a vote of hands of who wants paper versus digital? Just heads up. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's better. It's easy. But for those people who really would need paper, you would be willing to do that? Yeah, we're always, well, well, basically I would ask the agency to supply a paper copy. Okay. So I can ask for the digital copy, either submitted through email or through um, email, flash drive, or possibly a burn disk. You would make paper copies from the paper copy? No, 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 no. I'm saying I would have a certain amount of paper copies for the people that want paper copies, right. including me, the mayor's office official and the city council official. Anyone who wants a digital copy only, I'll just ask for a digital backup. So I just need to know how many paper copies to ask for okay. within the application, if that makes sense. I, okay, so you're gonna ask each agency to provide that many paper copies that then will be compiled into a binder. Yes, and okay. then, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Okay, just for clarification yep. purposes. So Deb needs one, anybody else need one? Brandy, I'll I'll take one too. Just I I would do both. Three, four. You want to do hands up? Oh, maybe. Yeah. All right. I know I would refer better to paper. One, two, three, four. Okay, I've got five. Okay, we have two and, intrepid souls. And then do it digital. And then I will need a copy. The official one for the mayor's office. Official one for city council. Who is not here from CDAC? Austin and Sacone. I'm going to assume paper for them. I don't want to assume otherwise. Exactly. And then uh, the other ex officio. So that would be 11 copies okay. from the agency. So that's saving five copies times 24, 25 or more agencies that can save a lot of paper by doing that. So okay. uh, if you guys want, make sure you if, make sure you guys are good with that. If you want to change it before I submit this to, <laughs> to RFPL, yeah, let me know. We want you to have something to drop off. <laughs> so I'm changing this to 11 copies. Okay, and a digital. And and people who got the paper copy could also get the digital. Correct. Yeah. I mean, it's just going to be one digital copy that's obviously sent out to everybody. To copy and okay. save. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they, they'll no agency will not submit a paper copy. They'll just have to submit less paper copies. Right. No, that's so that'll great. still come in a contract and supply. Okay. That sounds great. Any other discussion on this issue? Anything you can think of, Steve? Well, I just want to run through all the little modifications before there's a final approval. Okay. You want us to run through it? Or? No, I'll run through it if okay. there's no other updates. No. Everybody good? Okay. So let's see what I've got this. Um, things are going to go out tonight, uh, hopefully. Oh, I hope this works. Okay. They're going to go out uh, September 30th. They'll be due in by the 2nd of November. 
I'm going to have a training session in between during the weekday on Zoom. Um, I will have them available for everyone on the 4th, either for pickup or drop off. Um, just let me know. Um, we are going to have an update in here on the ERR process. It'll be a little blurb in the RFP itself, but I will also talk about it during the training session. Um, let's see, I will record the training session. Um, and although it's not part of the RFP, before contracts are picked up, I'll also do have a pre-contract session to talk about reporting and, and, re and reimbursement requirements as well, uh, which again, during the day, Zoom, you guys are welcome to join. Um, and then I'm gonna ask for 11 copies and a digital. We used to do digital or I had to and I stopped doing that, but we'll bring it back with digital either via email or something. Um, I'm gonna say in the case where an agency misses this, I can make a digital copy just by scanning it in. I would rather they supply it though. Um, it just makes it easier. Um, and so that's the updates I'm saying uh, to hear, other than our, all the standard modify the dates of the contract periods, modify, you know, update all the numbers and stuff like that, which is standard. Okay. Um, does anyone have anything else to add? I have a question. Yes. Um, are these funds restricted in any way that are going to be on this RFP? Is this for any and everything that they might apply for from HUD? Um, so generally, the so the, there's there's two grants that they apply for. One is the ESG, which is a homeless grant. That's also required. That has additional requirements that they be on the COC and some other steps too. Uh, it's much more restrictive. CDBG is done for both program services and capital projects. And honestly, sky's the limit. Um, the main issue is that the programs or the capital projects need to help. Uh, predominantly low-income people or serve a low-income area or serve a limited clientele, for example, seniors or uh, trying to, my mind went blank. Seniors is the one I always go to. Um, so you, th those are the requirements and that's within the RFP. That's within the, pro the uh, application itself, the details, um, what they get. But it's, it's kind of like anything you can think of that'll meet those requirements can qualify. So we've done programs in the past like Boys and Girls Club after school program, the Urban League Summer Program, Action for Older Persons Senior Health Insurance Program. Um, we're putting money into the Roberson uh, Museum Sidewalk Rehab. That's a safety issue more than anything. Um, so that's there's a lot of things you can do. It's, it's hard for me to tell you what you can't do because there's so much you can do with it. Um, it's, okay. it's, it's difficult to say, you know, to put limits because it really is unlimited as long as it meets the core requirements of assisting low income people. Okay, I was just asking because specifically about being a member of the COC, I remember last year, um, a few organizations wanted to apply or at least start considering applying, but they weren't members of the COC. So I wanted to make sure oh. that was expressly said in this RFP. So that folks, if say, if they receive it on Friday and they're not ready this year, they can start approaching the COC so they can be ready in the future. I, I think the way we handled it last year, and I, I, I would be willing to push forward with this the same way, as long as they are in the process of applying to the COC and they have to be a member of the COC before like an agreement would be able to be signed with them for spending ESG funds. So um, yeah, I know there's a few agencies out there that are kind of new on the scene. Um, and definitely it, you can watch them at the COC meetings, like people get active and involved with it and you can see these new agencies come along and absolutely, I definitely encourage them to, uh, to apply. Um, but yeah, the, the, the restriction on being a COC member and the letter of support, I think we can sort of not hand wave it, but it's like, as long as you're going to get one of those in the near future, you know, by the time you guys are awarding funds, they should definitely be, you know, by the time spring comes around they should have all their ducks in a row. If they don't, that's that's a problem, so. So is, is this something that needs to be added to the ESG application to make it clear that this is one of the requirements? I, I can, I, I think it may be in there already. I didn't print off the ESG application, but I can definitely add to it Make in sure there. that it's highlighted and people really understand it. Add ESG uh, potential good standing or potential uh, letter of support. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So we can add, you know, making sure that the COC requirement is added to a grant as part of our 
voting process? Um, uh, yeah, sure. It wouldn't be this specific RFP, but the ESG RFP, but yeah, I right. can add that in but there. I if mean, it's not already, it may be in there and I'm not sure, but okay. I'll, I'll double check. But we I'll fix the language. Okay. So that would be another thing that we would continue to consider as we vote on this. Anything else? That was a good point, Ebony. Since there is no further discussion and we are allowed to vote, Steve? Okay. Based on the list that Steve gave us, can I have a motion? I make a motion to approve Michelle what makes we have the discussed motion. so far. Someone second. else? I second. <laughs> Ebony <laughs> second. Everyone in favor, please raise your hand. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Steve. Unanimous of seven, excellent. Before we start, start on the calendar review, Steve, can I bring up the uh, discussion you and I had this morning about a meeting on the actual districts within the city that qualify for the you know, low income and, and moderate income grant application parameters? Remember we talked about possibly having a meeting where we go over some of the areas Oh, were you talking the about focus. the the data meeting? Yeah, the focus. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'll I'll just tell you, there's no. I mean, there are certain. There's predominantly. Well, there's about four areas of the city that technically fall outside of automatic CDBG eligibility, but projects can still apply even within there as long as they're still serving low income people. Um, but yeah, what we can do, and we had talked about this, and I'd sent something about this in the email. I'm thinking that and we've never really discussed this, is a data meeting where I can get you data and show you maps of poverty concentration, of um, poverty and low income technically are not the same. I know that sounds weird, but they're not the same, but I can get, definitely show you both of those numbers. I can show you unemployment figures. We can see areas. I potentially could get crime data uh, if you're curious about that, um, I could potentially pull code data um, as well. If you're looking for specific types of code violations, um, anything else you guys are thinking of, if you want to give me a list of where, basically, if you're looking for where are things happening, what are the numbers, where is, what's the, the hardest hit area of the city, you know, we, I can definitely put that, put those numbers together and give them to you. And then you have that data for determining um projects and would we schedule a meeting to discuss i have some numbers i want they seem pretty obscure but i think it'll help for the case of helping to improve garbage collection and stuff around town so i'd really like to know how often the street sweeper is run and also how often city count i mean um the garbage collection is collecting the city cans Okay, that's that's a really good. So that, that those those are the kind of questions I'm going to forget this. So definitely email it when we when we start coming to, to getting the list together. But this is the spe specific type of thing I'm asking, you know, because that those are questions I can get from DPW, DPW, Public Works. Is it Public Works? They don't they collect I don't, I don't know how the city functions. Sometimes, Councilwoman, um, you may know this more than I do. Um, so yeah, I can get that data from various departments, uh, but that's why I was also talking about like code violations. If you wanna know areas that are, I don't know, um, landlords, for example, the, the, the densest area of landlord violations, yeah. we can do that. So, so as, as we think of these things, can we send you emails with our concerns? Absolutely. So if we wanna schedule this as a meeting and it should be included on this list here. Exactly. Give it, give me at least, a week, preferably more. So if you want this by the 29th, it's, it's not going to happen, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but if you want this data and, and you give me, you know, a couple of weeks, I can pull the data, or at least I can start emailing everyone um, and, and sort of compile all the information together that I can and get it out to you guys. So. so would you require us to send you our emails within the next two weeks? Would that be a... I would say... Day? Determine on the list when you want to have that meeting, because okay. it probably is a good idea to have it as one meeting. Right. And then but that's I mean, your sole focus. What would be your turnaround time? Uh, I, um, give me two weeks. Okay. <laughs> give me two weeks on this, especially <laughs> if it's any, anywhere around where you guys are, these applications are coming in. You think I, sh I should have maybe a little bit more time? 
depends on what's being asked because as you know there have been a lot of foil requests about mm. landlords and tenancy and so i think it's great but we don't know what level of detail is being sought yeah so you you might want to wait till you see what you have first yeah and and because it's a new process i would think that we you know we'd probably want to start somewhere so that we would need to work into the schedule and then refine it as we go along. So if we have some basic stuff, like the stuff Ebony just talked about, yeah, three or four or five items that you could give us some information on, it's a start. So I would say maybe a good idea is for everyone to brainstorm on this one and sure. then email me directly and I'll compile everyone's ideas together and then look yeah. at it and we can make a determination. I would say tentatively though, go ahead and throw a date sometime in late November, early December as yeah. a potential target date yeah, for that Yeah, meeting. that sounds very reasonable. Very reasonable. Okay. And we can talk about that in our next meeting after you've received everybody's requests. Yeah, so it's out. Apps out. And then sometime in here, I'll do a session. Okay. So what were the other things we talked about? <laughs> the other thing is the calendar review. And, well, that's oh, this. Yeah, yeah, this right here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think we've we've pretty much discussed everything we needed to on the the data meetings, right? We understand how we're going to start. Well, we need we do need dates for the next. Like, when do you want to have the CDAC meetings for presentations? So well, that's that's the next thing yeah. on the. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Didn't, that's didn't that's number over, five on on the sorry. one on the agenda that was for today. <laughs> I jump ahead, which I printed out from home. Um, this yes. This, testing so the data review is prior to the presentation so you won't be biased in your so before you see what is being submitted you want to see the landscape of the city is that what i'm understanding uh, i think that was the idea okay. and especially for new members to give them kind of like a background Perfect. of what the cdac really does and what our focus yes. should be I would so it's more informational than anything else yes i would hate for the applicants to perceive your review of data after no, they no. present it no. as no, this is just, you know, Pre something for us. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So I just wanted to clarify that with the timeline so that it isn't yeah. misconstrued. So I was thinking, again, if we give Steve, uh, if we get our request to Steve real quick and you can turn it around, we might even be able to schedule something in late October. For the data, for the, the data, data meeting. meeting. Okay. Yeah. And so um, the October meetings, these are good times to do the non um applicant meetings exactly. because they haven't turned the applications in and we can we can get some exactly. data from that so you're you want to do the data meeting sometime in late october you're thinking maybe if you're going to start the review in early november yeah it would probably be a good idea if everybody agrees you can come in your halloween costumes it'd be cool <laughs> make the zoom meeting so much more interesting um <laughs> i would definitely say go ahead and put a solid date on here okay but that's what we're going to talk about because okay. we don't know whether that's the the other issue. The more complex issue we have here is that again we have to meet here and we have to meet at times when city council isn't meeting. So that basically leaves us with Tuesdays and Thursdays. And one of our members indicated that Tuesdays are definitely out for her. So we have a bit of a dilemma. So the handout I gave you is every free date that's available, and that takes into account holidays. City Council, Zoning Board, Planning Board, and I think I even took off weekends because I did not want to come in on the weekends. So this is where, unfortunately, this may be a non-standard uh, meeting process just because of the nature of CDAC. So um, I encourage you guys to, you know, take this with an open mind. Take Tuesdays out because we, we're going to lose a CDAC member if we don't, unfortunately, um, and go from there. So I guess the easiest way is to canvas everybody and see if Thursdays work. Does anyone have a problem with Thursdays? And and this also depends upon the people who haven't or who aren't here and what their schedule would be. It's going to be a little complex here. If Thursdays work for everybody here, then we can reach out to those other people and ask them if Thursdays work for them. I was not notified that Thursdays were in and out out were out for anyone. Okay. I so also wasn't told assume. Tuesdays were out for anyone either. So okay. take that with a grain of salt. But you could you could confirm. Yes. So what does everybody think about Thursday? 
Do we it, have anybody who? I have a question. Um, so this list that you gave us, mm -hmm. these are the dates that we can be in city council chambers. But so scratch off all the Tuesdays because that's not an option. Right. But why is Wednesday not possible, Mary? Because council meets here on Wednesday. Oh, oh. but that's I thought. Not every Wednesday. Oh, Just some Wednesdays. Yeah, I could do one. Okay. Well, then we would have a very <laughs> complex and alternative schedule that would include maybe Wednesdays and Thursdays. Good, you pick good. You picked up on that. I believe I counted eleven Thursdays from now until the end of the year. Um. Also understand FY forty nine will con the 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 process will continue into the next year, but starting next year, that's when you're going to have city departments come come into effect. They're going to come in. They're going to do presentations. That's the time where the COC will make a presentation and recommendation on ESG budgets. Um, it's going to be the time where you're going to have public hearings to get input from the public. Um, all of that stuff's going to occur in uh, that period of time, and you want to have your process done and a budget recommendation to city council and the mayor probably at least March, April at the latest in order for uh, the mayor to then do an update, do an updated budget and get that out to the public for review and city council uh, with enough time for um, official review, which is 30 days. So what exactly are you saying is that we should try to schedule something maybe every two weeks until our process is done? Which is what we have traditionally done. Yeah, anything anything you don't do this year has to be done next year. So if you that generally we're going to want you're going to minimum want presentations from all the applications. You're looking at probably twenty four to twenty five applications, roughly ten minutes each. So you're looking at maximum six applications in an hour. Uh, assuming everything's perfect, that's four hours. That's either two really long meetings or four normal size meetings. So that's two to four right there. Uh, that's assuming you only get 24 applicants. You're, there's been discussion about having the data meeting. That would be another one. Uh, discussion of having um, the non-applicant stakeholders provide presentations for those who weren't here. Who wasn't here last year? Does everyone remember the stakeholder meetings we had? I wasn't here last year. Mm. Um, so I guess just for the record, uh, the stakeholder meetings were when we reached out to things like um, RISE for domestic violence. They don't apply for CDB2 funds. But we wanted to know the domestic violence situation in the area. So they presented, um, and it was very nice and very educational. Um, I did reach out to veterans groups, but no veterans group, or the veterans group I reached out to never responded. Um, I reached out to DSS for housing issues, those kinds of things. So anyone who normally doesn't apply um, could come and sort of make a case. You know, this is the situation of housing in the area. This is the situation of domestic violence in the area. This is the situation with uh, crime victims in general in the area. So um, that may be one or two additional meetings right there. And just to add, we added a we we created a, a, a basic format paper that we gave everybody so that they had the same basic presentation to us. So we were getting the information that we needed. So that was a very good thing as well. So you're saying seven or eight meetings, it looks like. Yeah, probably. Plus any additional ones you can think of for whatever reason that you think might be necessary, or if you want some meetings to, like if you think in the data meeting might need to go into two sessions, take that into account. And are you saying it needs to be done by March? We should be done with everything by end of March. I end think, of March. Okay. Preferably. Because the this changeover is that city, you guys are not only doing the one public hearing. Um, the second public hearing is part of the city council public hearing. Um, and uh, that's just the change, HUD's reinterpretation of our citizen participation plan, even though they told us we were doing it right before. So uh, now the mayor's budget's the final budget, and that's the one that has to have a 30-day public review. Okay, so based on that, let's talk about the days that we meet. I think that's gonna be the more complicated issue. Um, I pr would prefer that we keep it to one particular day a week so that we don't have to check every week is it Wednesday or Thursday or so if Thursdays work it seems that we could go with them and then plan how many of how many Thursdays we need until the end of March 
allowing, as we always do, a couple of you know contingent dates just in case. So this calendar only go. I only have this out to the end of December. Right, um, but I mean, you know, if we plan to the end of December, we're going to make great inroads, and then we can talk about it as. Yeah, and I figured next year, starting January, as time just, goes by, January will be the re-election of officers, and then you will determine the final calendar till the end of the of the year. Does that sound reasonable to everybody? Yes. Anybody have any comments about I that? Think, I think it's a good idea to keep it Thursdays. And then if we had to add anything like maybe the data session so as to not use up a Thursday, we could use a Wednesday yeah. for those, okay. yeah. those extra type things. Um, are there any days that anyone can't make it? Because that might be a good idea too, to go ahead and take that account. Any dates that one or more members simply cannot make it and they already know they can't make it for holidays. You mean, you mean Thursdays that they couldn't make if we decide on Thursday? Yeah. So for example, there's a 12, 1229 um, and even 1222. That's hitting a little close to Christmas oh, yeah, for some no, people. No, we would want to yeah. we, we decide whether we want a meeting that week at all. I took I took Thanksgiving because it's a holiday already off. So. Yeah. Yeah. But so. I mean, we, you know, as we schedule out, as long as we know that Thursdays is the day and then, you know, you leave off the holiday. We always usually did that anyway. We never met around Christmas time. Yeah, it's uh, we're, we're starting so a little weeks, late. So it's those it's, two weeks could. So we might have to um, maybe take advantage of a Wednesday now and then if we had to. Yeah. So if we made a calendar that talks about Thursdays until the end of the year with contingent Wednesdays sort of highlighted just in case, that would get us to where we need to be. Wouldn't it, Steve? Um, I think so. <laughs> um, and it would give everybody a clear picture that Thursdays are the days that we meet. And then we could decide if next week we, you know, that next week we had a Wednesday that wasn't, council wasn't meeting and we needed to follow up on something we could see. We'd have some flexibility there. And hopefully if we're, our numbers are back up, quorum won't be quite a problem. Yeah. Quite the problem that it has been. I do have one question, uh, Councilwoman Riley. Um, I understand there's the budget meetings are kind of loopy. Do you happen to have those dates on here in relation to this? Because we will not be able to meet in, in this chamber on those days. This is only going to impact, I think, the first half of October. And I don't even know if we plan on doing anything in the first half of October. Anyway, these would be Wednesdays and it Mondays? It might be any days. It's, oh, it's, it could it's, be a Thursday. Like I said, it's it is actually it a Thursday, Thursday, October 6th is oh, okay. our, our meeting from five, Oh, I took it off already. Oh, okay. five to six. Were, were there any others? Um, Thursday, October 13th. Okay. Still early enough in the month that okay. it wouldn't affect. I'll go ahead and take that much. one out. So we could still schedule something on uh, the data meeting toward the end of October. Yep. It looks like. Um, that 12th, is, is that 12th open? The Wednesday? Because if you guys want it, I can go ahead and reach out to some of the, 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 the non-applying stakeholders and see how quickly some of them might be able to present to you get to everyone yeah well if that's the case could we then reserve those dates in october and then depending on what response you get we could have the data meeting first because you have control over that yeah absolutely wednesday the 12th is a budget meeting as okay. well 12th okay never mind yeah. i was only doing <laughs> thursdays so you want the wednesdays too um you the know wednesdays what I... that you're not meeting we would okay. save as our contingency dates okay. if it works with the rest of the committee i i think Lori said something about after the first half of October, it's pretty much freeze up at that point. Yep, we're done after the 13th, but then oh. we go back to our normal Monday, Wednesday. Okay, and that's taken into account on this on this calendar thing. Okay, so the other dates, I mean, the, the next one will be the 7th, and I don't think we'd have anything ready in the next seven days anyway, so that, that's moot at this point. So, so okay. it looks like you're talking about the 20th and the 27th of October. 20th moving forward, yeah. Yeah. Can I uh, also add another comment? Is it possible that we use the downstairs room that's uh, typically used for work sessions? We're not. We can't use that room. It, I mean, when if City Council is in session, we can, no. we can't meet. We can't I I think it's there's a couple of things there. One is the COVID issue because it's too tight in there. 
for a, a technically open to the public meeting. I think that's part of the problem. Um, I did ask about having these meetings down there, and that was essentially the response I got. They're also being recorded. And I don't think they have any recording equipment down there that is like this kind of stuff. So everything's pretty much stuck in city council chambers. So we have to work around city council. We have to work around, well, or work with planning board and ZBA. City council, get they win. They, they win. <laughs> Their <laughs> right. dates are set in stone that we have to work right. around. Planning board and ZBA is a little bit more flexible, but I'm, I'm trying to be kind enough to them because theirs is a pretty regular schedule. And CDAC is a little bit well, wonky because it's not like a regular meeting where you have regular things you talk about each and every time. It's always very different from the previous meeting. So, But very important. It is very important. I'm glad you guys are here. As long, Thank as, you. <laughs> as, long as you you make sure that you say that. So going forward, can we kind of look at this as a tentative schedule? that we start with the 20th, if Thursdays are good, and then basically every two weeks, barring Thanksgiving and then the Christmas holiday. Okay, so I would say probably don't wanna put a vote on this. Um, no, this but is... we can, you know, this is what you can share with the people that weren't here at the meeting. Yep. And then when we convene next time, everybody will have a pretty clear idea of what it is we wanna do when we go forward. I, I think I'd be comfortable even doing an uh, email vote on this. Fantastic. Okay. I think it'd be if we okay. we could do that, yeah. Okay. And then we can communicate by email if anything else needs to be changed. But I'll work on this as a sort of skeleton yeah. and flesh it out, um, especially once I um, start asking the questions about the data. So if you guys can get me your questions that you want for the data meeting, that which will, I think it technically is going to be the next one. I think we're expecting the next meeting to yes. be the data meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, let me know as soon as possible. I'll compile them. Give me, uh, I'll give you a, uh, like a week, get them to me and I'll compile them and let everybody know what I'm going to be looking for and starting to pull together. I'll also let you know if I'm going to have problems with any of the data you're looking for and, or if something's going to take a lot longer, um, but definitely be creative. What questions do you have? What, what information do you want to know uh, to help you make a determination on where funding needs to go? That's really, that's really what the, the data meeting's about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we start with the idea that the 20th will be our tentatively first meeting, and we will have that information, and it will be a data meeting, which gives the other agencies another two weeks to get back to, which probably works out rather well. Yep. And then I mean, in November, we start looking at the RFPs. Yeah, and I think even by the 27th, I can probably go ahead and have a um, at least a few subrecipients, or not subrecipients, stakeholders. Um, on the hook for doing right. some presentations on that. I do not know how presentations are gonna work in city council. We do not have a projector, or do we? I thought we did. There used to be. Is it one of those ones I'm gonna to have to bring one in from? Hmm. Oh yeah. And did someone have to like set up a projector? Right? Uh, so much high tech. Yeah, that would be nice. I thought they, didn't we used to have like a big TV? Public can't see what we see, then we're in violation. Oh, yeah, okay. So it had to be situated so the Zoom camera could see what's on the screen too. Okay. So the public here sees it and the public there sees it. Okay, all right, yeah. So for all these meetings, assume these seats are full and that, everyone has and everyone does have the right to come to these meetings and review them and watch them whenever they want and we're holding them so we have to kind of work with that mindset um, which is another reason why they're being they're here is, is because of that so what's the rule on what the public participation is are they viewers or observers only um yeah so technically and then just as a right as cdac you can if you so wish choose to especially if you see like a bunch of people coming in if you wish to have some sort of public comment period you could add it in um, but in general yes unless you uh, as the chair permit them to speak they technically are just observers that might be something we want to do with the data meeting i mean that would be a good thing it wouldn't necessarily interrupt our process our review process but it would allow like the public hearing places for people to speak so we might want to consider that are you do you want me to put a public ad in the paper for that? 
if everyone well i mean it was just an idea what does everyone think to have stakeholders come in and wait you mean stakeholders or just anybody but okay. i mean you know stakeholders who are you know want to advocate even more for the districts in which they work or an area where there is particular need if in other words opening up that data meeting to the opportunity for people to speak might be something that would be nice it might be something that would have to grow with time but okay. it might be something we'd want to think about because it would make the meeting a lot more um, relevant so um, I would say in that regard, what I would do is, uh, if that's the way you want to do it, I can do uh, an ad in the paper. I can let that, but more importantly, that I don't know how many people see the ads, but um, I could contact the listserv, which is several, it's like 150 people, including a lot of stakeholders, and say, hey, we're doing this public hearing. And if you let me know how you want to let them participate, if it's going to be just like an additional public hearing type thing mm -hmm. um, or something like that, or if we want to structure it around as as topics come up and as maps come up, if people want to add add commentary, that's up that's up to CDAC on how to, how to do that. How would we want to handle that? I mean, I would think that we'd want a, like a public hearing, we would have very specific timelines for people to. And and since it would be our first one, you know, it would be sort of a pilot. Yes, Justin. This I think would need to have time limits because I can feel. Oh, absolutely yes. no, but it's just yeah. whether they're going to speak, you know, when one after another, or whether they're going to speak on particular issues that we're right. talking about. That would be the other. It other just thing. worries me when he said he was sending out to a list of hundreds. I was yeah, like, no. oh. No, no we don't there's want... not enough pizza in the world for that. No, <laughs> okay. but but mm -hmm. you've been to our public hearings. It's not it's not like there's like thousands no. of people no. show up. Unfortunately, I wish a lot more people would take part in our public hearing meetings. Trust me. But this um, would be a good idea to to look at and to maybe flesh out and see if it could work. I mean, that would be cool because it would give everybody in the city the opportunity to understand exactly what the block grants are and how important they are to our budget as a city. So, so, oh, so if if we're trying to invite everybody, do you really think the newspaper is it? I would do. I, I would. It, it, this isn't anything that's required under the CPP. So now it's a which is the sorry. I do apologize. Citizen participation plan. <laughs> so it's not a HUD requirement. So this is really just CDAC perhaps getting additional input or clarification on data that emerges from the question CDAC is asking. Um, it Generally, also serves as an educational opportunity for people that maybe have worked in the city for years and don't really understand completely what's going on. It yeah, works, it works both ways and it could be very flexible as long as we keep a time limit, like four and a half minutes and that's it. I'm just I saying I, I, I work in the community. I don't know the last time I looked at a newspaper. Yeah, well, I also do the listserv, and that's, like I said, that's generally the one I get most of the feedback from is the community listserv. Um, that includes pretty much all the stakeholders who apply, some yeah. stakeholders that don't apply, most of the COC members and citizens who, the more active citizens in the community. Um, as I've said, if anyone wants to be on a listserv, if you know anyone who wants to take part in these yeah. meetings or just find out stuff, have them contact me. It is completely free. I add them right to the list, no questions asked, and they get emailed. Just make sure it doesn't go to junk because I have a feeling that happens more often than we'd like to think about it. You know, and as we start these new things, you know, word of mouth, us okay. telling us agencies that we care about would be Thank also very helpful or speaking to our uh, council people too, letting our council people know so that they can spread the word as well. So Brandy, let your council person know when you see them next. Yeah, please, please pass that on. If you could. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so... Um, can you know, we put it on social media? Can you put it on Facebook? Do we'll have be, to make a flyer? Yeah, on our My question, I wanted to know if the HUD department has a social media like I am I am we're not allowed to Oh okay. Yeah, that all sort of communications go out through the mayor's office. Um I don't know if the mayor's office would be supportive or opposing to it. I don't know why they would be opposed to it, but we can definitely ask for the mayor's office to support it through um it'd be like maybe a press release and or a facebook comment but i can ask in other words we'll try all the ways we can to get the word out as much as we can yeah yes once it's on the calendar though it does state if you want public comment 
because public comment is different from a public hearing because a public hearing means a vote is impending. Yeah. But a public comment ses ses session will be noted on your agenda and on the calendar. And what we typically do when we want the public to recognize such, we then share that on our various social media pages. So it will be postable. And because this is a public meeting, it has to have 24 hour notice at least with those specifications within. So I think if everyone shares that, mm -hmm. then again, you will increase the visibility yeah. of the yes. meeting. And if our council people have, you know, ways to broadcast this information, it would be, again, with anything new, it's going to be a, you know, trial and error kind of thing, but we're moving in the right direction. Or can we have little mini meetings in each district? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we wish you well. <laughs> um, so for an official CDAC meeting, that is a possibility, but we need to take it into account in the calendar. Um, and uh, so that is a possibility. Um, it's going to be a little bit more time intensive um, and we'd have to figure out the logistics and as well as if it's an official CDAC meeting, that stuff has, we have to figure out how the, the recording will take place. So that's the stuff I don't know. Um, we can also do, um, say district wide focus to bring them to these meetings. So try to communicate with, um, particular district, uh, residents and try to get them to come in. Um, that's also a little bit more difficult. Um, yeah, that's, that's that with the public meeting laws, this is where it all becomes like more confusing and a little bit more difficult, but I'm not against that at all. I'm just thinking logistically, it will be complex. Yeah. The other thing to remember too, is that if we are trying this, if it's a pilot project, in essence, we may want not want to be too aggressive right now. We want to figure out, work out the bugs first and then see how many members are willing to do such a thing. So it's, it's a work in progress. It's a big first step, no matter how you look at yeah, it. We've never done a data meeting before, and 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 I'm I'm really excited about that, just because I think I feel like this is information that I end up putting in the the action plan at the last minute, just because I have to from HUD. But it's really should be there at the very beginning when you guys are making mm -hmm. budgetary decisions and talking to residents and stakeholders about the stuff. So because you could have a re you could have a stakeholder come in and go, we're in the most poverty stricken area of the city. That's great. Is that hyperbole? Is that accuracy? Yeah. You could say, well, great, your district has an issue, but this district, is, I mean, I, I know right off the top of my head where the poorest district, the poorest area in the city is. And unfortunately, it, it does, I'm not always get the best funding for it. I'm it's just the way it is. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but that's something that maybe if that was made available, made more public, people would recognize it and go, okay, that's why the city's focusing on this area here. And it's it's metric space. Once you have numbers to back up, it's great. No one can argue with the numbers if you go, this is the worst area because of X, Y, Z. Although we don't want to say worst area, do we? We need to come up with a better. Opportunity areas. Opportunity areas. Okay, yeah. that's good. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds good. But mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of there's a lot of area. And unfortunately, the, the action plan is never um, the action plan has never been a geographical focused um process and that's unfortunate and i i really feel like it it needs to be in some manner um because there are areas that have harder times than others so so um okay are we agreed that this is how we would start we will reach out to as many people as we can have the data meeting tentatively on the 20th of october everyone is in agreement we will share this information Yep. with our colleagues who are not here. Yeah. Yep, and I will um, I will send out, yeah, this would, I don't think this will be a vote or anything. Um, I will send out, when I'm gonna try to as soon as possible, so longer than 24 hours, I would prefer days and days and days. Uh, I'll send it out to my listserv. I'll do an ad in the paper just because we should do an ad in the paper. Um, I can ask the mayor's office to advertise it. And once I get the meeting set up on Zoom, I don't think there's any restriction or rule disallowing you as CDAC members from sharing it on your own Facebook page or your own social media or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I always, I, I didn't, I don't think, I think I did at the beginning of the year. Okay, so this is the beginning of the next fixed year. 
you represent the city, you represent the re residents of the city for this action plan process. So be aware of that. That's a that's a tall responsibility and, and definitely okay. advocate for the people you represent. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So um, fight tooth and nail for what you think is right. Um, we lost a CDAC member to COVID. And if anybody remembers her, she fought <laughs> tooth and nail for every dollar. We and missed I she loved did. it. We missed so, her. Um, <laughs> but um, I wish all of you would have that fighting spirit. I'm not saying you don't have that fighting spirit, but I wish you would all just engage in that fighting spirit. Yeah, go forward. Just so, remember, Steve, you asked for it, okay? Yeah, I know. Okay. I regret this probably. Really. So, <laughs> um, on recording. So, but we'll try to get everything out. Um, if you guys think of other ways of communicating with people, um, I can contact. We got a bunch of the churches, um, that serve um some more impoverished areas that we've been helping. I could possibly reach out to them and see if they would be willing to pass it on to their um, um not clients. Why is that word escaping me? Who goes to churches? Members. Members. Uh, yeah, congregation. There you go. Thank yeah. you. Congregants. Okay. Uh, They're parishioners. Clients. They're clients, yeah. Um, <laughs> and pass that on because that can usually be a good way of spreading the word as well. Um, and obviously all the, sub, the, the agencies that do apply. I have to stress to the agencies because I'm going to feel like if I don't, they're going to come in here and try to sell their they'll do the same thing they do like at public they do hearings at yeah. every public hearing but yeah. no 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 and, and as you know as the committee we will have a lot of uh we will have to make sure that people understand and uh after the first data meeting we'll know what we need to do for the second one that we have next year but it's a good start and steve that's the end of our agenda okay Are you green? Are there, is there an opening on the board? Is there any members that are not? There are two openings available right now. We have the uh, council at large position, I think is still open. And the, one of the mayoral positions, if you know anyone who is willing to put up with the pain, I mean, willing to <laughs> come to these meetings and represent the, the people of, of Binghamton, please pass that on. For city council, that would be passing it on to Lee to pass it on to councils at large. You can also send it to me and I can pass it on uh, or the mayor's office directly if you know anyone who'd be interested. Um, so we think that there are two openings. There are two openings two right openings. now. You can mention that you can play with these cool microphones and <laughs> Steve's going to buy pizza someday. You know, pizza is only middle. for budget votes. You get that once a year. That's okay, it. We'll take what we can get. But Deb? Oh, yeah, yeah, no. You'll excuse me. I need to leave for the evening. It was great to see everyone, and thank you. Nice thank you for you. coming, Deb. Yes, yes. Thank you again, uh, committee chair. I would make a recommendation, though, before you adjourn, or at least via email, that you solidify the process for the data meeting, because if you're closing public comments... Steve will do that. Steve will take care of that. Okay. For us. I mean, basically. That you all will agree because yeah. again, and that's, that is presented. That's what we just tried to do is to say that this is how we're going to do it. And because it is a pilot, right. we're going to have to kind of play it by ear well, to a certain extent, but Steve knows how to do that. Let me share this additional piece though. After public comment closes and data is presented, you will not yield any questions from the floor. That's a suggestion. If you don't tell the audience that before, you may have a number of questions that are thrown out as the data is being presented. So that's a different format. So one well, is an open format I'm, and one is public comment. I would have to ask Steve, but I'm- Steve I, will be right back. Yeah, he'll be right back. <laughs> and he said, but, do not close the meeting until I, he's back. But I would, I mean, are you you talking about a format? Wait a minute, my chair. Uh -oh. You okay? Oh yeah, no, <laughs> my chair went backwards. Um, you know, I'm not sure what CDAC regulations are on such a meeting since it is sort of an, it's a new meeting and it's not really a public hearing. It's not going to be, a, you know, advertised as a public hearing. So it is our hope, it is our hope that we have a certain amount of flexibility as we kind of, you know, test out this process that we can. It, it was you know, my understanding from what Steve just said that it will be advertised as a data and public hearing. No pu public yeah, comment. No. Yeah, because I thought he said hearing. Did he? Uh, 
I don't want to look at his notes to see if he wrote comment. The only but... difference is once you close public comment, that means when data is presented, they cannot come back up for questions. Well, but but again, unless we have, want it that do way. we have to close public comment before that? It's up because, to you. That's, that's what I'm what, saying. What, we are, what I think we are envisioning is a uh, sort of inclusive process where we would not have to have such rigid lines. That's what we're hoping. That's why I'm saying you need to convey that before you adjourn because there's one format that's been consistent. No, I, I think that you have to understand we are lay people. We're not really thinking on, uh, a lot in those lines. What we're thinking about is what the most effective way to talk to the community will be. And I think that, you know, we sort of think that we'll, we'll play it by ear. If we get 150 people, we'll, <laughs> we'll do what you say. You know, we'll present the thing and shut down. Late. That's what no, I'm but saying. What I'm, I'm, I'm basically <laughs> kidding about that. Oh, okay. but no, no, <laughs> no. I'm just saying that you know this is going to be a trial process, and we're going to try to keep it as informal as we possibly can. I would think that that would also create an atmosphere among the public that they would feel comfortable to come in and and learn what we can share with them, as well as you know give us their opinion. So, Steve, the councilwoman just. Um, made some comments about the uh, rules on public comment and the presentation of material. Okay. But we were, are we incorrect in thinking that we can have a informal kind of process for that data meeting? It doesn't have to be, when we invite comment, are we, are we restricting ourselves in a certain way? I, I have no idea. We've never done it before. So it's something I would have to talk if, to Sharon if about. If it's something that is not, it is not written in stone, then I think that we are very happy with being informal. Okay. Yeah, I can talk to Sharon about that and make sure we're following. Yeah, you don't want to advertise that, this is all it. based off of what legal was telling me anyway. Right. We don't want to advertise something where we're going to be locked in. We want this to be as flexible and as flowing as possible, especially for the first meeting of this type. Informal comment period. All right, I'll, yeah. I'll ask Sharon yeah, about that and limitations sure. on it. Okay. Um, we have members who have to leave. So okay. is there anything else that we need to be discussing? This is, we're going to take that back, right? So he's going to, this is not this, I'll take, no, I looked at it okay. already. Uh, I, I don't have anything else unless okay. CDAC members have anything. If there is nothing else, can I have a quick motion to adjourn? I motion we adjourn. And I'll second. Second. And can we do a quick, starting with Kenya, can we start uh, attendance? <laughs> Uh, Kenya Mayor Kenya Middleton, Mayor appointee. Ebony Hotel, Ebony Hotel, District Four. Brandy Brown, District Three. Councilwoman Angela Riley, District Three. Justin McGregor, District Seven. Michelle O'Loughlin, District Five. And I'm Marianne Callahan from the First District, and we are adjourned. Thank you. Good meeting, guys.